last year. Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our fall board meeting of the Hudson River Valley Greenway. We're delighted to be here. There's nothing, I think, as uh, magical as a fall morning in the Hudson Valley, um, and it's just always a delight to be here. And It's been many months since we were together, I think June in Newburgh, so it's great to see so many of our friends and familiar faces and also new friends. So welcome, and uh, let's get started. Our tradition is always to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I uh, believe the flag's over here. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So I'm Kevin Burke, uh, Acting Chair of the Greenway Conservancy, and my partner in crime is Barney McHenry, uh, Chair of the Hudson River Valley Greenway, and Barney will welcome you all. It's easy. Welcome. And we'll introduce ourselves. Kevin is co is is co-chair. And next is oh, yes, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I am Senator Sue Serino for the forty first district. I cover most of not just in part of Putnam, but I live right here in the historic high park. We're, we're delighted to be here. I'm Assemblyman Kevin Cahill, and I'm from Kingston. I represent portions of Ulster County and the two best towns in Dutchess County, Rhinebeck and Redwood. Yay! <laughs> Good morning. My name is Rich Stein. He's been a member since birth here, right? <laughs> Good morning. My name is Rich Stein. I'm Chief of Staff for State Assemblymember D.D. Barrett of the 106th District. Uh, representing Dutchess and Columbia County, and she apologizes that she can't be here today. I'm Andy Beers, uh, employee of the Hudson Greenway and director of the Empire State Trail. Good morning, I'm Jamie Ethier with the New York State Department of State. Good morning, I'm Nancy Beard. I'm with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation in for uh, Commissioner Sagos. I'm Jane Daniels. I'm a member of the Greenway Conservancy Board. I'm Ned Ames, member of the council from the Bronx. Johanna Yon, I'm Orange County Historian. Jason Wolfanger, New York State DOT, covering for our Commissioner, Kathy Calhoun. Uh, Thea Malarkey, Scenic Hudson. Steve Saland, I'm a Council Member. Linda Potter, Red and Russell County Council Member. Sandy Galef, Assemblywoman, representing uh, parts of Putnam County and parts of Westchester County, and I'm on the council. Wendy Aldrich, a Red Hook Town historian and a member of the council. Cindy Lanzetta, I'm a Conservancy uh, board member. Meg Downey, Dutchess County representative of the Hudson River Valley Greenways Community Council. Tom Watt, representing the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. Owen Rafter, Dutchess County, representing County Executive Marcus Molinaro. <laughs> Jane McLaughlin, I'm the treasurer of the Conservancy. Stefan Yurabek, Hudson Valley Conservancy, and National Heritage Area. Sally Mazzarella, Greenway Council, uh, and uh, a Rhinebeck resident. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Larry Turk, Superintendent, Roosevelt, Vanderbilt, and Van Buren National Historic Sites. Uh, I'm Aileen Rohr, the town supervisor of Hyde Park, one of the many wonderful towns in yeah. Dutchess County. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Keller, Acting Executive Director of the Greenway and National Heritage Area. And, and um, our, 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 our guests, some of our beneficiaries, starting on the left, my 
My left is. I'm not one either, I'm sorry. I'm Carol F. Cook. I'm the new director of the Gomez Mill House in Marlboro and Newburgh, New York. Paul Glesta, working with Andy Beers on the Empire State Trail. Julia Farr, Executive Director of the Kingston Land Trust. Edie Greenwood, a re recipient today of um, Town of Northeast, a uh, comprehensive plan update. Good morning, Glenn Gadali, Barton and LaJudas Engineering. John Falk, Supervisor of Town of Shongham, a recipient today. Sally Decker, Mid Hudson uh, Chapter of the Adirondack Mountain Club. Hank Osborne, New York, New Jersey Trail Conference. Tracy Clothier, the LA Group, accepting awards for a few communities. Jeannie Williams, the Feeder Canal Alliance and the Champlain Canalway Trail Working Group. Good morning. I'm Priscilla Brenler, Executive Director of Greater Hudson Heritage Network. I'm Richard Anderson, and I'm from Kinderhook. Uh, friends of Lindenwald have a trail in Kinderhook. Uh, and we're here to see about the grant today. Nicole Anderson, Director of Grants for Orange County. I'm Dave Church, the Orange County Commissioner of Planning here for the County Water Authority, which is the recipient. Bob Ewald. Fish and Wildlife Managed Board, Region 3, Landowner Rep. I'm Christine Vanderland for the Columbia Land Conservancy and a co-applicant with Columbia Economic Development Corporation, which is receiving a grant today. Robert McKean, Red Hook Town Supervisor. Carl Beard with the National Park Service Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Assistance Program. Nick Joseph from Senator Sweeney's office. Paul Sparrow, director of the FDR Library. Betsy Jacks, director of the Thomas Cole National Historic Site and council member. Mark Molinaro, Dutchess County Executive. I, I represent all of the wonderful towns in <laughs> Dutchess County. <laughs> involved with the Greenway ever since it started and in and and it um, well it's been how many years and how many meetings now? 147. Yeah, 147. <laughs> of course he entered politics before he could vote. Right? Yeah, give it time. Okay. Oh Mark, we're delighted to be here and welcome and, and have you welcome us because you're always welcome too. And it, Mark Molinaro. Thank you, sir. I, I appreciate it. And um, while I do represent uh, all of the wonderful towns in Dutchess, uh, I do live in, in the best one, uh, the town of Red Hook, of course, uh, where we have the finest, finest historian. <laughs> okay. Just ask him. Uh, I'm thrilled to welcome you back, and uh, uh, we're always uh, quite uh, happy to host uh, uh, the Greenway here in Dutchess. As, as you know, Dutchess County uh, was uh, among the first uh, in the state to accept uh, the challenge to create a Greenway compact some years ago, and uh, uh, I think uh, you all know uh, my uh, personal uh, commitment to the Greenway and the principles uh, that uh, uh, the Greenway was founded upon, which um, Barney has always asked me to, uh, uh, to when, I, when I offer some comments, to be inspirational. I don't know that I achieve that all the time, but I, I, I intend to be aspirational. Uh, and, and, and that is to, to in, encourage the Greenway, uh, as again you convene in Dutchess County, uh, to, to really remember uh, where and why this organization, this institution uh, began. Uh, we are fortunate uh, today to have uh, one of its original sponsors, uh, former State Senator Steve Saland with us. Uh, 
uh, Senator Saland some years ago in partnership with then Assemblyman Maurice Hinchy, two gentlemen, different sides of the Hudson River, different political parties, different houses of the state legislature, came together to bring together the Hudson Valley region. I don't know that we can point to that many of those examples uh, in today's political climate, which is why the Greenway is exceptionally important. Uh, you represent the interests of a region that too often does not have a singular voice in the state legislature, uh, in Congress, or even as communities uh, 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 collectively. Uh, we've always treated the river as somewhat of a divide between us, recognizing, however, that our economy, our political interests, and our natural resources extend well beyond any municipal boundary. The Greenway's role is critically important. That's why, by the way, I would also, uh, and I couldn't, can't help but say this, that's why it's important that, uh, and I say respectfully to my friends in, in, the, uh, in the administration, it's important that the administration of the state of New York treat the Greenway with the permanency that it deserves. Uh, we have had an acting director for as long as I can remember. Uh, that really does need to change because the Greenway's role is about bringing together different and various communities and community interests from all throughout a region uh, that, again, doesn't have that sort of uh, uh, definition of place, right? You look to Western New York, you can speak to what that is. You know what that looks like. And of course, it's uh, not linear. You can speak to Long Island, that's easy. It's an island. Uh, uh, in other parts of the state. But this is a sprawling region uh, that too often doesn't necessarily have that, that, that singular voice, that, that ability to represent itself uh, as clearly as is necessary. And that's why the Greenway is so critically important. It is important if we're going to argue against turning the Hudson River into a, a barge parking garage. It's critical if we're going to argue for the continued cleanup of the Hudson River from upper Hudson to lower Hudson. It's critical if we're going to ensure that agriculture continues to be preserved as we are the food uh, generator, if you will, uh, for New York City. It's critical if we're going to grow the economy that as a region, as a region, we have the respect and the recognition uh, that we so desperately need. And that's why it is important, I think, and that some years ago when a previous governor sought to eliminate the Greenway, we all stood up and said no. And thankfully, this governor and others have embraced the Greenway as a concept. It is important, however, uh, that we don't simply uh, exist as a concept. Uh, for those of us who serve at the local level, we need you to advocate for the policies, the ideals, the zoning laws, the economic development practices, the tourism opportunities, the environmental protection measures. We need you to advocate at the local level, regardless of political party, region, community, where we come from or how long we've lived here, because no one else will. No one else will. And that, I think, is so important for this organization. It's, it is. You are not merely an opportunity to give grant money or to meet once, once in a while, to talk about meeting for once in a while. You have a real advocacy role, a very important role to agitate, to irritate, to legislate, and to advocate for the kind of change and the kind of protections that we need in the Hudson River Valley. And now is a good time. Uh, when I began an elected office, we were dealing with the suburbanization of America, the, the mauling of America. Uh, and you existed as a way to, to, to really help us focus on protecting open space and farmland and preserving our community centers. Well, that economic and development pressure, that residential development pressure subsided. You know, we all said, okay, now during this moment of pause in development, we'll all come together and create real strong policy to protect our centers and preserve our green spaces. And you know what happened? You became the acting greenway. Now, during this moment of pause before the next wave of development, as we hope to focus around our cities and village and hamlet centers, as we hope to protect farmland and open space, it's critical that the state of New York recognize this institution as a singular voice to help us, to help us prepare for that next, that next wave. And it will happen. It will happen. And are we going to allow ourselves just to become subdivided into, uh, 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 what, uh, mediocrity? instead of celebrating the exceptional attributes of the Hudson River Valley. So as you're here today, um, I I'm hopeful that you will uh, 
continue to uphold the principles upon which you were founded, that you will continue to speak loudly on behalf of your organizations and institutions, but most importantly, that you will continue to coalesce around the, the, the singular important role of the Greenway, to speak for a region that needs your voice. And as you're here in Dutchess County, only two weeks before I have to release the 2018 executive budget, I want to take this opportunity to tell you uh, that not only does Dutchess County talk about embracing the Greenway principles, we're putting them and continue to put them into practice. Uh, for the now fifth consecutive year, sixth consecutive year, we will appropriate a an additional $1 million in 2018 for the preservation of farmland. That will bring our commitment up in over $7 million over the last uh, those numbers of years uh, and uh, preserving over 3,500 acres. Preserving over 3,500 acres of active farmland. Uh, we're also going to initiate a pilot program to work uh, to develop uh, our city centers, identifying uh, properties that have gone undeveloped for a number of years to, to focus on making them catalysts for economic growth in Poughkeepsie and Beacon and Wappingers Falls and Millerton and the village and hamlet centers that exist uh, throughout Dutchess. And we continue and will continue to partner with Cornell Cooperative Extension to expand opportunities for farmers and farming to open up markets. So uh, that is Dutchess County putting the ideals and principles of the Greenway to practice. I'm hopeful that other communities continue to do the same. Uh, and as I said to you, and I, I don't want to belabor it, but I think it is important uh, that you remain absolutely committed uh, to the ideals and principles upon which this institution was founded, because it is that critical to ensuring the Hudson River Valley remains the great place it is to live, work, and raise a family. So God bless. Thank you for coming and enjoy the day. We turn to, to uh, another um, senator. Steve Saland is here, and, and it's it, Steve. Would you you were present at the creation? Would you say a couple of words about it? And that uh, um, that is before he goes south, as he old, uh, when the leaves fall, he goes. Steve. and there would be very little for him to say. I find on the rare occasion I'm in the same forum with the county executive and I have the opportunity to speak, there's very little for me to say because he's generally said it all. But truly, this has worked far better than, it, 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 it even exceeded expectations. There was something Assemblyman Hitchy and I truly believed in, we fought for, there were bumps in the road, I saw Barney on the way in earlier. He said, we wouldn't be here without you. And I said, no, we wouldn't have been here without you, Barney. Because the reality is, with all due respects to Maurice and myself, we were merely doing Barney's bidding, <laughs> as is always the case. <laughs> so <laughs> it has worked extremely well. I take great pride. I, I don't come as often as I should. I did want to get here because as Barney pointed out, the leaves are falling. And while I'm still a New York resident, I've, the winters don't agree with me the way they used to. Um, but I did want to get here. I did want to partake of the meeting. And I did want to congratulate all of you for bringing to fruition and being part of what was once merely a dream and is now a reality. Thank you, and please continue to do the great work you're doing. Thank you, Steve. It really is true, way back when, <laughs> some years ago, is that uh, the, the Greenway became law because of Steve Saland in, in the Senate and Maurice in the Assembly. And that um, many of you were not even born then, but, uh, but uh, so you, <laughs> you came later than that. So Serino, another SS, right? Um, Steve Sands, who's Serena, still um, welcome and, and at, um, please. Thank you, everyone. You know, I always like to say the SS stands for short and sweet, not in stature, <laughs> in speeches. <laughs> 
I'd like to say a special thank you to Barney and Scott and Kevin and the Greenway Council for all of the hard work that you do. And also a special thank you to Paul Sparrow and Larry Turk. You know, they open this room so often for our community. You've really become such a huge part of our community. I can't thank you enough, both of you. You know, in my mind, the Greenway serves as a pathfinder because the Greenway's mission, as you know, is to help communities develop a vision that best enhances, utilizes, and protects their natural resources. It's with this vision in mind that the Greenway helps communities find their path to maximize their potential, encourage public access, and to connect communities to one another. On the legislative front, I'm working to try to complement the Greenway's mission. Earlier this year, Assemblyman Cahill and I were successful in passing a critical extender bill, which will allow the indemnity provision for compact communities to continue for another five years. This bill was signed by the governor. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Signed by the governor in August and will remain in effect until December 31st, 2002. And you know, when you think about our communities, our greenway space, there should be no R&D involved. And as with Senator Sland and Assemblyman uh, Maurice Henchy, you know, we're following in those footsteps. You know, Kevin and I do a lot of good work together. Assemblywoman Dee Dee Barrett and I worked on the Anchorage bill. Assemblywoman uh, Sandy Galiff and I are working on other bills as well. And I, I can't thank you for having those partnerships. They're so important. Uh, speaking of the governor, M Megan, <laughs> right now, he has before him a bill that I considered an absolute priority issue for me and for the entire Hudson Valley. On October 11th, the bill, which would give our state a voice in the process by which Anchorage sites are designated, was sent to the governor. He has 10 days, excluding Sundays, to sign the bill or to veto it. So we should know by October 23rd. Keep your fingers crossed, say your prayers, light a candle, whatever floats your boat, no pun intended, <laughs> just send good vibes for him to sign the bill into law. And I want to thank all of you in the room, and I have to say a special thank you uh, to Andy from Scenic Hudson. He was a driving force uh, for Dee Dee and Barrett and I uh, to get this accomplished. So uh, thank you for all of your efforts uh, in both houses. With the Empire Trail, the state is embarking on an ambitious mission and one that should spur increased tourism traffic and provide an impetus for economic development along the way. I know the Greenway has been hard at work and the design plan was recently released. I commend you on your hard work and commitment to the long-term goals to make this trail a destination for many generations to come. Once again, the Greenway illustrates that it is the pathfinder, both literally and figuratively. I understand that the hard work in seeing the Empire Trail through to its completion is behind you and ahead of you. I understand the collaboration that is necessary at every level of government, and most importantly, I understand the need for committed partners in this process. So whether your role is the pathfinder or the trailblazer, please know I am happy to work with you and be a voice for you in the state senate. And also I have certificates for all of the recipients that you will be getting um, from Kevin, Scott, and Barney. So th thank you so much, and I apologize that I have to leave for another meeting, but thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Kevin Cahill is another one of these legendary Hudson River people. He's, he was uh, started in the assembly in 1992. Yeah, I mean, because you go back almost to the beginning of the Greenway, for heaven's sakes. And that's it. And it, we're delighted that you're here. We, you're a, a, a Hudson River person, a, a SUNY New Pulse, right? And Kevin Cahill representing the 103rd District. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and, and thank you for having us here today. Sue uh, uh, said so much about uh, some of the things that matter specifically with regard to this wonderful and amazing Hudson River, but in my view, you can never say enough. Mark, Mark pointed out that um, many people viewed the Hudson River as a divide. I can assure you that in the 80s and 90s, when Steve and Maurice were thinking about the Greenway and when, uh, when Barney was uh, lobbying on behalf of, of making it happen, there was a cohesiveness to the river that was envisioned. 
uh, that many people didn't come to realize until another time. Uh, I took a look at the original Greenway legislation and uh, there was some concern. I remember the beginning. I was in county government at the time. I remember the beginning and there was some concern over whether this was going to last. And I'm happy to report, sort of happy to report, that there are two members of the state legislature who were sponsors, prime sponsors of this bill, who are still there. And there were uh, more than a dozen prime sponsors of the bill when this happened. Bill Larkin is still in the legislature, the only senator who was a prime sponsor of the bill following the author, Steve Salan. And in our house, Deborah Glick from Manhattan is the only member of the assembly who was there when this bill uh, was made into law. Uh, I am a person who likes to remember the past and who likes to learn from the past and who feels that that's the experience that, that informs us for today and for tomorrow. And uh, Barney pointed out that I started in the legislature in 1992 as a member, but I started in the legislature in 1975 as an intern for the freshman Maurice Hitchie at the time. And I will tell you that the idea of empowering the Hudson River Valley, empowering the Catskill Mountain Corridor, were things that Maurice had in mind from the moment that he put his seat, his, himself in the seat for the very first day. It was an important mission on his part to make people around the world, and I mean around the world, recognize the important sense of place that we all have. Um, before the redistricting of 2000 occurred, uh, I went to Maurice and I said, you know, we're about to break the sanctity of your assembly district, because I don't care how long I serve, I've been there longer than Maurice, it will always be Maurice's district to me. Um, and, and Stephen Yarabek applauded that. I will point out, not a constituent. Um, uh, uh, but, but I went to Maurice and I said, I said, you know, they're thinking about making the district cross the Hudson River. And a lot of people think of it, as Mark said, as a barrier. I said, what do you think? He said, I think it's the fulfillment. I think it's perfect. I think it should happen. And sure enough, it happened. The town of Rhinebeck became part of what was Maurice Hitchie's district. He was no longer there. He was now in the United States Congress. But it was still Maurice Hitchie's district, and now part of, of uh, Dutchess County was in it. Uh, the people in Ulster County didn't seem to mind too much, so much, but the people in Dutchess County were like, what the heck is going on here? But there was one person who came up to me very early in my tenure, and, and he said, uh, he actually did say this. I'm going to embarrass him a little bit because, you know, it's kind of a weird thing to say. But he said, I don't care what they say. Welcome to Dutchess County. And that was Wynn Aldrich. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that union of the two sides in this little assembly district that is Maurice Hitchie's district is fitting and appropriate. What we have seen over the course of time is the idea that the river and the community means more than politics, means more than pretty much any other barrier that we might face, and that there are indeed bridges across that river, and those bridges have been extremely productive. You have, fortunately for the people of New York State, fortunately for the people of the Hudson Valley, a series of legislators who have never allowed politics to stand in the way of, of their support for important causes. And the most important cause that has joined us together is the Hudson River Greenway. It has been an important part of the cohesiveness that we experience, but it also expresses the sensibility of the people who we represent. Uh, young, conservative, Mark Molinaro uh, was a land preserver early on in his career and remains so to this day, setting an example not just in his community of Tivoli and Red Hook, uh, but for the county and now the state of New York and what he has done. Uh, Steve Saland, in his retirement, where he could be enjoying Florida 12 months a year if he wanted to, although I get bet you he's pretty happy to have not been there for the past couple of months, um, uh, continues to contribute to our community. Sue Serino came in and immediately embraced it. Dee Dee Barrett uh, from the Upper Hudson area uh, has, has been making it a part of her work, not just for the Greenway, but also on the Anchorage issue. 
my good friend Sandy Galef from Putnam and Westchester counties represents a sensibility about this river, a sense of ownership, a sense of responsibility and stewardship for this river that is uh, something that we see in our colleagues up and down the Hudson River. And I dare say it's infectious. I dare say that people have taken note. It's not just this walkway across the Hudson. It's not just the Catskill Mountain Trail and the interpretive center that exists up there. It's not just the, the, the good work that the Greenway has done. It is really transcending all that. And people are starting to say, wow, what a wonderful and amazing and uniquely special place it is. Um, I'd like to say it's because of our natural beauty, and we do have an amazingly beautiful area. It is as beautiful as so many places in the United States and so many places in the world, but let me assure you, it is far more than that. It is the people. It is the Barney McHenrys. It is the Wynn Aldriches. It is the Steve Salans. It is the Mark Molineros. It, are, it is the people like you who take the time to come to meetings like this that make sure that the public learn and appreciate uh, a sense of place. So uh, congratulations on the longevity of the Greenway. Uh, I uh, am happy to say that I was able to help its con the continuation um, and uh, hopefully uh, the legislature will continue to be supportive and I join Mark's uh, uh, aspiration that we treat this in a, in a more uh, permanent way and that we recognize the great potential that exists, but also the great accomplishments that have already been achieved. And with that, I thank you very much. And I'm going to be joining Sue, and I know Mark and I also have to go someplace. So thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Steve, uh, have a safe flight. Thanks, Mark. Thank you so much. Another Kevin who honors the name. <laughs> I, I wanted to just say before we move on that I, I don't know if all of you are picking up on this morning, but I, I am, and it's very refreshing. There's a true theme of conciliation and fraternity this morning and people emphasizing bipartisanship, and this is something I think that we all know we need, and it's very refreshing, I think, to hear these sentiments from, from every side this morning. We, we really appreciate it. It's certainly the way the Greenway tries to operate. It's our, our spree, and um, it's great to see such great represent, representatives uh, emphasizing that this morning. So thank you both, and I'll be thinking of you. And let's hope we can keep that spirit going. Um, we actually have a few more guests to welcome this morning and to give greetings. And uh, I'd like to first uh, start on my list with Rich Stein, who is the Chief of Staff to Dee Dee Barrett, our great Assemblywoman. Uh, good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Rich Stein. I'm Chief of Staff for State Assemblymember Dee Dee Barrett of the 106th District. Uh, before I read a quick note from the assembly member who uh, is unfortunately not here today, uh, I know that she would want me to say that she echoes the sentiment of uh, County Executive Molinaro uh, and Senator Serino and Assemblyman Cahill on the Anchorage issue, and we're all anxiously awaiting action from the governor, and as soon as we find out, uh, you can be sure that you'll hear from our office. Uh, so the assembly member uh, wrote a quick note, and she wanted me to read the following. Dear friends, I'm sorry not to be able to join you this morning. I am on a legislative trip with colleagues from the Veterans Affairs Committee to visit Pearl Harbor this week. It has been, as you can imagine, a very moving experience, but it was made all the more relevant for me having learned so much about that day that shall live in infamy and the aftermath from the fantastic exhibitions presented last year by, the, by our FDR library to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor as I have learned here, but on multiple bases and military sites on the island of Oahu. In fact, the chief historians shared with me how helpful the Presidential Library has been preparing in their own exhibition at Pearl Harbor. I share this because it so well illustrates how our beautiful and historic Hudson Valley is truly linked to the county and the world, the country and the world in many ways. What happens here, whether it's fighting to protect our majestic Hudson River or breaking new ground in climate smart agriculture, reverberates in other states and beyond. In fact, I had the opportunity to talk about our pioneering carbon farming legislation this summer at the National Caucus of Environmental Legislators. Uh, the Caucus of Environmental Legislators Conference and legislators from other states have already reached out to introduce similar bills in their states. I certainly hope New York will be the first to institute this carrot rather than stick approach to carbon sequestration. Currently, several of our state agencies are meeting as a result of funding for a study we secured in the last state budget to look at how best to implement this. 
I wish you all a wonderful Greenway meeting, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Warmly, Dee Dee. Thank you, Rich. Um, and now, speaking of one of our great uh, towns in Dutchess County in, in, in the Valley, here we are in Hyde Park, and we are blessed to have Eileen Work come and say a few words um, on behalf of the town. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Great to see everyone again on another beautiful Hudson Valley day. Um, I think in this year of 2017 that we'll, we will eventually call it the year of natural disaster and perhaps unnatural disasters, if people get what my meaning on that. Uh, but, you know, Hyde Park, uh, we are really so fortunate and so thankful for the inspiration provided by Greenway. I, I kind of like to think that we're the boots on the ground. We're the, we're the community, uh, along with many of the other towns represented here, that take the, uh, the twinkle in the eye of, of Greenway and apply it to our own communities. And, you know, there are so many wonderful partners here. Um, looking out at them and uh, you know Hyde Park we've made a lot of progress in the last few years in terms of uh, making the connections advocated by Greenway and and embracing uh, our partners like Winnikey and uh, County Planning and the Empire State Development and and the Greenway and we're really uh, trying to create that sense of place here that the Hudson Valley uh, is looking for and and that we are capitalizing on and so it's really a, a pleasure to thank be able to thank Barney and the entire uh, Greenway staff and as well as the incredible leadership that we have at our county and state levels so thank you very much and uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and on your way out make sure to head north and admire our, our newly installed sidewalks and stone walls that were uh, originally started with a, a Greenway grant so uh, thanks again Thank you, Eileen. We also want to uh, be sure to acknowledge and to, and to give a chance to hear from our host this morning, um, starting with Superintendent Larry Turk, who oversees the beautiful uh, lands here, and, and not just here, but also up at Vanderbilt and up in Kinderhook at the Van Buren site. So, Larry, we're happy to have you here. Our Ranger leader. Good morning. President Roosevelt described a vision of America which he kept in the forefront of his mind since he was a young man. I quote, I see an America whose rivers and valleys and lakes, hills and streams and plains, the mountains over our lands, and nature's wealth under the earth protected as a rightful heritage of all the people. It's a privilege to be able to welcome you here to the home of Franklin D. Roosevelt National Historic Site. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Larry's our ranger leader. He comes to us from the west, right? from Aztec and Chaco sites, and um, has brought stability and strength to, to his role, and we're happy to have you here and to be working with you. And last on our list is, of course, Paul Sparrow, who's the director of the library here, and I don't know if anyone here follows Paul on Twitter, but I do, and he always has really interesting things to post about the Roosevelts and, and uh, the world they inhabited and the world they shaped, and um, we all draw inspiration from him. So, Paul? Well, I'll keep this brief because I think you want to get your meeting started. It seems like this intro has been going on for a long time. Uh, but I just want to say two things. First of all, and I may have said this last year, FDR would be so thrilled uh, at what the Greenway represents and the fact that you are all meeting here on, on this piece of property, which he felt was really the epicenter of his environmental efforts. Uh, people don't uh, fully appreciate what an environmental uh, warrior he was, uh, from the dealing with the Dust Bowl and the restoration of the Midwest to his planting of a half million trees on this property, to his commitment to creating wildlife refuges and national parks. Uh, but FDR truly believed that good environmental policy was good economic policy. He would totally refute this concept that uh, economic policy is at odds with environmental preservation. He strongly believed that good environmental preservation is the only solution to sustainable economic growth. Uh, and it's important that he, you, you go back and think about that. You should not be at odds 
with development, you should understand how you can use it to preserve the environment in effective and meaningful ways. For example, he used this property to grow trees. Uh, and, and it was a very useful, economically beneficial process that he did that preserved the land, maintained the beauty, but also allowed him to sustain the farm here. Anyway, thank you very much for being here. Uh, Sue said it, and I think Larry and I both really, really strongly believe this. We want this facility, the Henry A. Wallace Center, another great environmentalist, to be a community resource. Uh, we try to make it available to nonprofit groups and other uh, governmental organizations for meetings like this. We want you to think of this as your public square, uh, and we do hope you'll come back and use it. Thank you very much, and good luck with your meeting today. Now, reaching back some years, it, um, Rose Harvey was, a, was one of the original members of the <clears throat> organization that, that, um, that founded the Greenway. And Rose Harvey, who's not here today, but she, I hope she, somebody will tell her that we, that we were thanking her once again. Um, Rose Harvey was, was the chair of a, of a, of, of, of a of a commission created within the, the original organization to talk about trails. And she said, you know what we really need is we need a Hudson River Trail. And it's all happened, except that instead of having just a Hudson River Trail, um, another Cuomo came along with an even better and greater idea, which is to create the longest trail um, st state trail uh, in the United States, the Adirondack Trail, of course, is 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 a little is a little bit a uh, little bit longer. But it. Um, and wh where are you? Yes, and that um, now. When Andy Beers has been a member of the of the State Park Service for. 20 years, I believe, right? Almost. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Tom. And, uh, and he's now heading up this organization that was, is going to make these two trails. This is an incredible idea to have a trail that goes not only up to Canada, but also over to Buffalo along that, uh, what are they, that, Damn canal over there, right? That thing. And it, uh, but if you if you if you tell us a little bit about how things are going, we're excited to hear about it, and we think you're doing a great job. Good morning. Uh, my name is Andy Beers. Uh, I'm the director of the Empire State Trail and an employee of the Hudson Greenway. I'm going to have a short PowerPoint today to cover two issues. The first is an update on the Empire State Trail, and the second is specifically an update on the Albany Hudson Electric Trail, which is the one major project the Greenway is taking as part of this. So I have a PowerPoint. Is it going to work? Oh. Not sure. Uh, no, we don't need the lights off. That's OK. Uh, all right. Thank you. All right. So um, the, um, excuse me, I'm just going to grab my. Okay, uh, so I presented an overview of the, uh, of the Empire State Trail at the last meeting, so I'll be very brief, but, uh, and I could take up the rest of the meeting, so this is going to be a little bit of a sprint here, but you know that the Empire State Trail will be a 750-mile trail spanning the state. It has three major legs, the Hudson Greenway Trail, which will run from the Battery in New York City to Cohoes and Waterford. Uh, where that intersects with two other trails. The first is the Erie, uh, the, the Erie Canalway Trail running all the way to Buffalo, and the third is the Champlain Leg, which will be the Champlain Canal Trailway between uh, uh, Waterford and Whitehall. And from north of Whitehall, it will be an on-road bicycle route through the Hudson Valley. Uh, particularly the sections from New York City to Buffalo, will, when completed in 2020, will be 85% of it will be off-road canalway and rail trail. And we have a $200 million appropriation that was enacted by the governor and the legislature in April to fund this project. 
in terms of, next please, uh, trail benefits. I'm not going to walk through these, but I do think uh, we realize early on that when we speak to groups about the Empire State Trail, we, everyone wants to know where is it, what is it, when is it. It's always important, I'm speaking to the choir here, but it's important to go through and really talk about the benefits. Why is this an important project for New York State? And these are the, how I organize my five thoughts. And simply just uh, suggest for those of you that are out speaking about whether it's the Hudson Greenway trails, the Empire Trail, or other local trails that you remember to start with the why as opposed to the what, because it's important to explain that. So what have we been up to since, I was, since we started, I was here in June? Uh, first off, we have released the draft Empire State Trail plan. A copy of it is uh, available at the back. Um, we, it's also available on the Hudson Valley Greenway. You can download it there off our Trails and Scenic Byways page. It's a 25-page document that describes the Empire State Trail in maps, narrative, and pictures. Really gives a, more of an overview than I'll give today. We did issue it as a draft in, uh, in August, and we are taking public comment on that and anticipate issuing the final before the end of the calendar year. But it really is the primary purpose of it is to establish the formal route, which we've now selected, and so people can still comment on any tweaks to that. But that document is out there. Um, as you know, the Empire State Trail is really a co-branding with a series of about 20 regional and local trails, each of which retains its own identity, its own special nature, uh, and its own, its own name, obviously, and we will be co-branding with it. So it will be the Dutchess County Rail Trail section of the Empire State Trail. It'll be the walkway over the Hudson on the Empire State Trail, the Walcott Valley Rail Trail section, the the uh, Corning Preserve Trail of the Empire State Trail. So we're going to be working with all the local and state managers of these sections of trail to celebrate and maintain their local special character, but to co-brand signage and wayfinding within that so that we have a continuous Empire State Trail route. In terms of project delivery, there are five participating state agencies. Uh, the Greenway is, we are, ch we are charged with leading the overall effort, but most of the construction projects will happen by other entities. Um, I'll get to the Greenway. We're doing one major construction project as the Greenway, and that's the second half of my presentation. The New York State Canal Corporation is responsible for about a dozen uh, construction projects that will finish and complete the Erie Canalway Trail and will create additional sections of the Champlain Canalway Trail. So those are sections of trail on canal lands. Some of them are along the current active Erie and Champlain Canal. Other sections are on the historic abandoned uh, uh, the historic uh, canalway right-of-ways on the towpaths. The New York State Department of Transportation is undertaking all of the on-road sections. Again, those sections where we don't have a rail trail opportunity, they're going to be doing improvements, whether it's shoulder widening, uh, um, side paths, or other things that will create uh, safe bicycle and, and walking routes along roadways. Uh, the uh, New York State Parks is doing several major projects. They own sections of particularly the Erie Canalway Trail. And then Metro North Railroad here in this part of the state um, is doing one important project, which is the construction of a new 25-mile rail trail called the Beacon Line, which will run from Brewster, New Brewster and Putnam County to Hopewell Junction and will connect up, will, will con close the gap in the, in the, between the current Dutchess Rail Trail and Putnam Trailway. We are also, uh, the Greenway is granting or, or providing funds to local governments as well that are going to be undertaking some of the construction projects. So we have, uh, we have a, we pretty much have our project down. We have about 60 construction projects, large and small, that these five entities plus some local governments need to complete in the next uh, three years by the end of 2020. In government world, that's sprinting. We are already sprinting to get these done. We have a lot of everything is now in design. Both complicated and, and, and simple projects are in design, permitting, environmental review, with the goal of completing them. And our, our our partner agencies have really taken a hold of this and are moving forward aggressively. Our schedule is aggressive. Okay. Um, the other thing just to say, in addition to the trail construction projects, another theme we are working on is what we're calling gateways or gateways and trailheads. You know, usually when we build, those of us in the rail trail business, we're just trying to get that federal grant and find the local match and get the t county or town forces to do some work to build the next 1.6 mile section of trail. And then when we built it, every dollar went into the trail. And so the parking lot usually can be like this kind of undefined gravel parking lot with a little tilting sign, and that's all that's there. 
And those of us that are big trail users will find it will use it, but that's not good enough, right? So, so part of the other piece we're working on is to build a series of gateways, about 20 across the state, uh, which are really, by gateways, I mean well-designed areas with parking, signage, welcome signage, interpretive materials, landscaping, uh, restrooms at some, not others, as well as smaller trailheads that are inviting little mini parks that will bring people who are not trail users to these places. They feel safe. They feel inviting. So that's another important part of the trail as well. DOT, as I said, is doing all the on-road improvements. And actually, in this area, DOT is convening at the end of, uh, uh, at the end of uh, October and into November a series of meetings with county town uh, officials, with uh, highway, uh, county and town highway superintendents, to finish the route there and talk about the specific improvements. So we're going to have one on-road section that will, that will get us through uh, the village of New Paltz and connect there. And another major, the one major on-road section in the Hudson Valley uh, is from uh, Kingston, running through Kingston and to the city of Hudson. So those meetings uh, are well along and we'll be working on the improvements there with local stakeholders. And finally, branding and marketing. We have our logo. There's a sign, our first produced sign. It's all of a week old in the back. That'll be the physical manifestation of the trail. Uh, but as I said, we're working on these amenities package and so forth to, to physically co-brand the trail on the ground. We'll, we'll, next summer, we've started work on next summer, we'll be launching a mobile website that will uh, provide people with obviously trail information. Where do, how do I access the trail? Where do I park? What's the condition of the trail? Is it stone dust or snowmobiles allowed or not? All these kinds of issues. Um, but also we'll have a highly interactive uh, features to it so people can access as they're on the trail, what are the food and beverage options nearby, where are, state, where are historic sites I might want to visit, where's the nearest farm stand, where's the nearest bicycle repair shop. So as a way to really energize and use the trail as a way both to provide information to users for the amenities they're looking for, but also to, uh, to provide that local uh, economic development stimulus from trail users who, who are looking for these services to make them easy to find. And we're going to be promoting connecting trails. Here in the Hudson Valley, you know, our, we are focused like a laser on building this 750 miles, completing this. Uh, that's a big task for us. But we have the Yonkers Greenway and the Old Croton Aqueduct and, and the Appalachian Trail and the future Catskill Mountain Rail Trail and the ONW Rail Trail and the Corning uh, 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 the, the, the Albany Heldeberg Rail Trail. All these these intersecting trails that we know we think of the. We think of the Empire State Trail as the spine here, but we're going to be promoting both on our website, our mobile apps, and on physical signage, all those connections to help build these robust trail networks. Finally, on the Empire State Trail, this is a picture from earlier this month. That's me in the blue shirt with the big scissors. Uh, everyone's laughing because they asked me to cut the ribbon and that thing, they couldn't cut anything. It took me about six whacks to get through it. Um, but where we are here is this is uh, just north of the village of New Paltz in the town uh, on the Walkell Valley Rail Trail, which is part of the route of the Empire State Trail. Um, this is the bridge over the Walk Hill. And uh, the approach, one of the approaches to the bridge, which was built on wooden piers from when it was railroad, had deteriorated to the point where it was closed. And so there was a break in the trail there. Couldn't get through. Uh, so the Greenway, we provided $200,000 to the town. Um, uh, Senator Bonacic provided a $100,000 grant. The town mobilized all that and we already completed and we had the ribbon cutting on the first project. So while, you know, in some ways modest in scope, 200000 is one-tenth of one percent of our $200 million budget. It's a great milestone for us that the first completed trail project is done on the Empire State Trail and now we only have 99.8% uh, left to go. So we're excited to, to hit that milestone. Okay, switching now to the Albany Hudson Electric Trail. This is the one project the Greenway is undertaking. It's in the blue box there. Uh, next slide, Scott. This trail will be a new 35-mile rail trail that will link the cities of Rensselaer and the cities of Hudson in Rensselaer and Columbia counties. It was an historic trolley line that operated from 1899 to 1929, an electric trolley, primarily transportation, uh, very successful in its early years. But um, it went out of business in 1929, displaced by the auto automobile and the truck, and ultimately the, 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 when the Great Depression hit. Um, it's been owned continuously still also as a utility corridor, uh, and it's owned today by National Grid. They have a very simple wooden poles uh, that, that go along it. It's not a big high tension line. They're much kind of smaller. They look more like a local kind of transmission poles along the corridor. They, are they own it in fee. They're authorizing the Greenway to, uh, to construct and develop this trail on their property. 
25 miles will be off-road, 10 miles will be on-road, on local roads wherever possible. In the cities of Hudson and Rensselaer, the old right-of-way is just obliterated, and there are other places like it's cut twice by I-90 now, so places where we have to do small sections of on-road. Our budget's about 35 to $40 million. Where we are in terms of uh, process, we have two consultants supporting us. We have ALTA, which is a statewide and national, really, uh, expert in rail trail, bicycle, pedestrian facilities. And we have the engineering firm GPI, uh, which is doing all the detailed engineering work for us. We're deep into public process. We've held about eight public meetings at the county and town levels uh, and, and local historical societies and others. We have a lot more of that work to do. Um, with both local officials and adjacent landowners to explain what this project is, to answer people's concerns, and to move forward. That's well underway. We'll continue for the next three or four months. Uh, the Hudson Greenway has initiated the State Environmental Quality Review Act process. Later in this meeting, when the Conservancy uh, uh, convenes our part of the Conservancy meeting, we'll be asking you to adopt lease agency status for the Greenway uh, and to authorize us to start the scoping process of Seeker. So that's moving along. Our goal is to have preliminary engineering plans completed by March 2018, so about six months from now, to bid the project by the fall of 2018 with final plans and to complete construction by 2020, and we're moving along. And I did want to, again, recognize Paul Glesta is here. Paul, wave. So Paul has joined the Greenway staff as well. He and I are the entire Empire State Trail team. A little engine that could here, but we have this great working relationship with all the other uh, state agencies, authorities, and local governments that are moving us along. Finally, my presentation, another document that we released literally last week is called the Empire State Trail Design Guide. A copy of that is on the back table if you want to take a look at it. It's a comprehensive document developed by the Greenway, uh, our consultant, Alta, and New York State DOT, and it particularly focuses on several things. Number, first, the first a couple chapters talk about the gateways concept that I talked about, the signage and wayfinding, whether it's the simple on-road on or off-road blaze or more, more detailed welcome signage kiosks to have. You know, we, the trail will be 20 different regional sections of trail, but we, we're trying to co-brand over that in, in a way that gives a cohesive feel to the entire Empire State Trail. But the other thing in this document, very valuable not only to this trail, but anyone interested in trails anywhere, is the three major chapters of the report uh, capture the state of the art on construction or design and construction and operation of off-road trails, so rail trails, canalway trails, shared use paths. Another section, on-road improvements, what's the state of the art for on-road improvements of where we are on, on the shoulder of a road, whether it's a little rural uh, town road or whether it's along the edge of a, a 55 mile per hour state road. And the third chapter, the crossings. How do we cross, safely cross the, when the trail crosses roads of different characters? What's the state of the art nationally so that we pull that together and that becomes a unifying design guide for the Empire State Trail? Uh, a couple pictures here. I'm not going to go through these of what some of the various on-road facilities are, but these are all captured and described in our design guide. Okay. That's my presentation. Sorry to go fast, but I know we have a lot of business to cover today. But are, are we taking questions and comments? Or are we OK? So open it up, questions and comments from anyone. Good point, you know, and, and actually, you know, we've developed a variety of materials, a, a little bit different version of this PowerPoint, which actually we'll send out to everybody. So if you're looking to present somewhere, you, you can use that in whatever way you'd like. Please, please feel free to cut and paste from it. Uh, you know, I think the key points really are, you know, um, I will say the, the issues that keep us up at night about meeting the schedule, it's not the engineering. We know how to design rail trails and canalway trails. Uh, you know, that's a well-developed science. We have hundreds of miles of, of these trails already in New York State. The, the biggest challenge is to getting this project done and done on time, actually. Number one is not so much for this group. It's environmental permitting. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to need wetland permits. We're going to need stream crossing permits, Army Corps permits, historic preservation review, uh, coastal consistency, all important things. And of course, we want to we want to meet all meet and exceed all environmental standards. But those are timely things that other agencies have to we have to interact with. But the other thing that's in some ways keeps us up at night is just 
doing all the community relations legwork. I mean, we are touching m more than half the counties of the state, hundreds of towns, villages, and cities that we go through. And so um, being able to go out and, again, explain uh, you know, why th what this trail is, which we can provide to the materials, but more importantly for this group, again, why it is. Why is this a benefit to your local city or village or town to come through? Why should you embrace this? That's really what we need more than anything, and there are s the trail is so large in its geography, including here in the Hudson Valley, that it's, you know, with just a couple of us working on this, we can never do enough of that community outreach. So I think in some ways, the best thing we could ask board members to do and members of the audience is, you know, we're happy to give you the materials and, and give you the confidence to go out and talk in general about this project in your local community. Well, you know, it's interesting, two things. I mean, the first is actually, you know, when the governor uh, announced this, we thought everyone would just cheer all across the state, and we got a great, uh, we got a great uh, lesson that all politics are local, right? So if the trail goes to your community, it's great, and if it doesn't, what, there's 200 million, and there's none in my community, right? So I think number one is, you know, emphasizing these connecting trails. We're, we're very serious about that. We know that many... Many people will be traveling multi-day trips along the Empire State Trail, some people, but most people will be using it for an hour or a half a day, and they're looking for those connecting loops. So I think really building upon and emphasizing those local connections, you know, is one of the things that's really important. I think the other issue just is um, when we develop rail trails, there's a great support and there's always some opposition or concern. And the opposition concern is almost entirely always adjacent landowners who have perceptions that whether you know, they're worried about crime, they're worried about pollution, litter, they're worried about trespassing. We have a lot of information out there that's from all the rail trails that are developed. That these things are they don't these problems don't come. You know, when you ride along rail trails, you don't see litter, you don't see vandalism, you don't. That's not the constituency of the people that are using these. So it's a little bit. A lot of it is just a lot of literally, uh, you know. People have valid concerns in, in answering those almost one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, on the Albany Hudson Electric Trail, we are out there standing in landowners' yards at 6.30 at night explaining how the trail, you know, yes, it's, it goes behind the back of your property, but here's why people are not going to come into your yard, and this is how we are kind of reinforcing that with design elements. So there's a lot of that one-on-one -on -one retail stuff as well, because ultimately for local officials, you know, we, we all know that when we, when we hold these public meetings, the people who come are not like, you know, they're not, they're, not, they're not just your person in the town. They're too busy, right? The people who tend to come are the people who have concerns, right? So we're doing a lot of that work as well, keeping our local officials on board. Mm -hmm. Greenway. Oh, my voice is loud enough. Okay. <laughs> um, Havistraw Bay Park is a beautiful, beautiful place, and every need that I can think of, uh, two weeks ago there was a wedding there, uh, but most important for Bob and I is um, helping uh, mobility challenged people. And this offered uh, these young people and older people, um, middle-aged people, all mobility challenged to have a chance to catch some fish. It was beautiful. Uh, kids were happy. They were, of course, the fish were cooperative too. But uh, most important was that the um, parks or stops that we have should be in some way reflective of all people. Uh, when you can walk, or even I can walk now, uh, mobility challenged people uh, often are missing the outdoors, which has a, a great psychological effect on them. So thanks again for the great work that was done down there. And hopefully, as we reach up the state, we will see similar opportunities. Absolutely. Thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. And certainly one of the great things about this trail, you know, the rail trails, canalway trails, their grade is gentle. The surface is either asphalt or stone dust. So they are all accessible to all, all, all abilities of users. Young, young kids, people in their, you know, healthy in their prime that are out there for exercise, elderly, people with disability challenges, and 
our access points will be as well. So I do think you're absolutely right. These trails provide a place in the community for those who are not com can't do a vigorous hiking trail, are not comfortable walking or riding on the side of a road. They provide this off-road opportunity where people of all abilities can access and enjoy the trail and the nature and hist history that surrounds them. Absolutely. Oops, sorry. New Yorktown, which is right dab smack uh, on the Empire State Trail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm also a member of the Yorktown Trail Count Committee, which is doing some of the things that you were talking about. What kind of funds are available to communities like mine that want to have um, better signage, um, having welcome opportunities? Um, in the towns, will there be grants, or those have to come through the uh, trail grants? So two things. Um, while most of our our budget is focused on the construction, let me back up. 400 miles of the Empire State Trail already exists in existing rail trails and canalway trails, and so our challenge is for the next three years is to complete that by building and improving the last 350 miles. So most of our budget is going into that, but we have reserved funds in our budget for statewide and including the existing sections of trail, a comprehensive signage and wayfinding interpretive program. So we have not yet engaged. In, in Westchester County, of course, we are on, we are on the, um, uh, the no North and South County trails, which are a cooperative effort of New York State DOT and Westchester County. We go right through Yorktown Heights, you know, which is a natural area that should be a trailhead or a gateway with good signage. And so we do have funding built in our budget for some of those improvements, including on the existing sections of trail. We haven't really engaged yet with local communities on that piece because right, we've been focused right now on just getting all the new construction into design. But as we get into the fall and the winter, we're going to be coming out and meeting with communities and uh, Westchester County on thinking about improving the signage there and so, what is the co-branding exercise exactly, right? They have signage, we need to get our signage in, their signage, I've, you know, ridden the whole trail in Westchester County, it's better in some places than others. So we're going to be working with Westchester County on a, a joint signage improvement plan for that and we're going to be bringing our dollars to the table to actually fabricate and implement signage. Are you going to be working with uh, the towns as well? Yeah, we certainly okay. will. Um, when you come down to Yorktown, um, please let me know. Yep, absolutely. We have a bump in the road. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, plan. obviously we're doing that. And then, right, the other thing that will be out there, you know, our budget will go so far. There's, there's always more that can be done, interpretive signage and so forth. And so the, the Greenways grant programs, all the other grant programs, state parks, DOS that are out there, Canal Corp has grant programs. Those will also be available to help build over time even you know beyond the sort of budget that we have at this point to do that in signage and gateways in communities like Yorktown. Mm -hmm. Thank heavens, Andy, that uh, you're taking the lead on this project because we know it will reach fruition. Uh, so you're doing an incredible job. But I'm so glad the CFA uh, was brought up. Uh, the Winnicky Land Trust has applied for uh, funding through the CFA uh, for trails uh, proposed in Red Hook and Rhinebeck. They are not part of the Empire State Trails, but they have the potential to connect to those trails. What is the process at the local level uh, to interact with uh, those trails being designed as part of the Empire State Trail? Do they at some point become eligible as part of that trail, 
what is the process going to be in the future? Yeah, so, and uh, Scott, Scott may say a little more when we get to ours, but what, what, a, what we've been doing with a number of our grant programs, the good news about this $200 million is this is state capital money out of the state budget. It's not coming from the existing funding sources, so we're not cannibalizing the existing funding sources that are out there, all the CFA programs and others, for trail work. In fact, we're almost taking out of the mix now. Some we're, we're no longer competing, right? And so in this grant round, the current CFA, where they'll be announced in December, um, a number of the organizations, parks and others, identified connecting trails to the Empire State Trail as a priority. And the Greenway has done the same thing with our grants. So physically on the ground, we will have signage that, that identifies and explains to people what the connecting trails are with some, you know, hopefully some our plan, all subject to getting, you know, what we can afford in day one, but, you know, signage that shows how does the, how does the, uh, how does the Yonkers Greenway connect to the Empire State Trail and where does the Yonkers Greenway go? On the Tappan Zee Bridge in 2019, a fabulous new uh, uh, shared use path, bicycle pedestrian path is going to open on the north span of that. How do you get from the from the, t the new Tappan Zee Trail, the Mario Cuomo Bridge, the two and a half miles to get to Elmsford where where the Empire State Trail runs north and south. So we're going to be, we're doing that physically on the ground as well as on our website. When you go to our website, you're going to see all that, and, which is both for your desktop and designed for mobile use. It's going to be supported in that way as well. So that's the quick answer. Um, you know, there may be other ways that we can think of that will further kind of build those connections so that people become aware of them. Uh, but those are the first two steps we'll be doing. Okay, I know we have a lot of, okay. Just one, just one, one quick note. Uh, it's about the level of significance of the work you're doing, Andy. And that is three weeks ago, you and I were both at the World Canals Conference out in Syracuse. And I have ins inside information that uh, your presentation about this trail uh, beat out 300 other competitors uh, comp competing pr proposals for, uh, for presentations at that conference from all around the world. That conference was attended from people from Canada, uh, Europe, China, that some 40 countries uh, represented. And I just want to say that uh, eyes from all around the world are watching you and hoping uh, <laughs> that you succeed and that we have something of, of worldwide importance to offer when you're done. Thanks. Well, that's a, that is a great note to end on. We are leading not only the state and the nation, we're leading the world on the Empire State Trail. And uh, I will be here, you know, when the session's over, we have a little display in the back, but feel free to, I'll stay around, feel free to come up and grab me if you'd like to discuss a specific project. So thank you and thank you for the Greenway for hosting and supporting this effort. Thank you very much, Andy. And this is going to be an ongoing conversation over the next few years, and it's nice to have you here reporting and, and good questions from the from the group. And uh, I think please don't hesitate to call on us in any ways that we can help and be of service to you in this great adventure that you're on. Um, we did want to pause. We had uh, Kevin Cahill earlier mentioning that he's someone that likes to look back, and we always are mindful of the people who have gone before us who've helped to create the Greenway and, and the great love for the Hudson River Valley, um, and one of those is Sam Aldrich, who we lost uh, since our last meeting. And as we did with Bob Boyle in June, we've asked uh, Wynn Aldrich to say a few words about Sam Aldrich, uh, who we lost uh, and want to honor. Uh, my uh, specialty appears to be obituaries and memorial statements. Uh, I hope there won't be the occasion for any more of them for a while. Alexander Aldrich, who died in, at 89 in July, was a prominent participant in the lengthy process of government engagement with this valley that ultimately led to the establishment of the Greenway. As a lawyer and first cousin of Governor Rockefeller, Sam Aldrich became something of a utility player, taking one job after another for his boss. These included, most consequentially for us, Executive Assistant to the Governor, 1963 to 66, 
President of Lana Preservation Incorporated, 1965 to 66. Founding Executive Director, Hudson River Valley Commission, 1966-68, where among other initiatives, he had the commission help block a nuclear power plant from being built on the Hudson within the viewshed of the Saratoga National Battlefield Sarat uh, Historical Park, and second commissioner of Parks and Recreation, 1971 to 75. In his roles both at the Valley Commission and at state parks, he worked closely with his cousin Lawrence Rockefeller, chair of the Temporary Study Commission on the Hudson River Valley, 1965, and who later served as the chair of the State Council of Parks. Sam Aldrich's increasing familiarity with the river and valley due to these important government and nonprofit assignments, coupled with his love of cruising on the waterways of New York, motivated his support for riverfront land acquisition by the state, especially undeveloped islands. Sam's final public appearance in our midst occurred last year when he participated in the celebration at Olana, marking the 50th anniversary of the saving of the historic site. As one of those who made it happen, along with much else of lasting value to New Yorkers, he received a well-deserved standing ovation. And P.S., Sam said on more than one occasion, and with uh, some considerable vigor, that he and I were not related. I will abide by that ruling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to make a note. A few years ago, Wint came to one of our board meetings and announced the creation of a new nonprofit called the Roosevelt Vanderbilt Conservancy, whose charge uh, working with uh, the site's past superintendent, Sarah Olson, and then with Larry Now, was to restore the home garden here at Hyde Park, which has been done. Uh, and is in the process of really being brought to the community. And last Thursday, Wint um, stepped down and retired as our chair. I'm on the board as well of that nonprofit. He stepped down as our chair and did such noble work and is such an inspiration to me personally. I know all of you consider him a friend. And I think that we should give it up for Wint Aldrich for all that he does. That's <laughs> Thank you, Wint. You're always here for us. Okay, so now we move into the business portion of the meeting um, on your agenda, and the very first thing that we need to take care of, which is some record keeping, is to review the agenda and also board member comments on the agenda. So are there any as we move into that phase? Okay, having none, we'll proceed. The, the uh, thing that we always do is, again, continue to look back, is uh, our June 7th meeting. Uh, we have minutes there that need to be approved. So if there are no comments, I'd like to call for moving. Okay, Sally first, Stefan second. All in favor of accepting those meet minutes? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so minutes are adopted. And um, we now need to do the same thing for the Grants Committee, uh, which is a smaller group uh, who met on October 11th to review all the grants that are going to be given out today. So this is just for the Grants Committee. Can I have a motion to adopt those minutes? Sally, and a second from someone from the Grants Committee? Meg, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so those are adopted. Yes? That's right. Okay, I think we had that in the minutes thing, but we should do it again. So Jennifer needs to be recused from the Kingston portion of the grants. Okay. Yeah, and I'm recused from the Northeast portion. Oh, that's right. And Meg from the Northeast portion. Okay, those are duly noted. Anything with Red Hook went out. I think those are reflective. Okay, very good. So now we uh, turn to the Greenway Conservancy uh, agenda, and we have a few things to, to come uh, into play here. The first is to call the meeting to order, and then we have a few resolutions that we need to pass, beginning with secret review. So, Scott, do you want to just explain those, and we'll sure. take the motions one by one? Don't, don't sit down. <laughs> All right, as Andy mentioned, we do have some secret business we have to take care of for the Albany Hudson Electric Trail. The first resolution that we need to pass, which was in your packet, is an authorization to declare seeker lead agency status for the Greenway Conservancy and to complete the state environmental review process. So if you want to... Okay, so I need to call for a motion for that. Stefan, a second? 
This is from the Conservancy. Sarah Olson. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, great. And what's up next? The next one is to authorize us to declare a seeker positive declaration and authorize public scoping for the staff to proceed with that. And by staff, I mean Andy and Paul. And so we need to do that. All right, let's, let's cement that. So we need a motion, Jennifer. And a second? Stefan, okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so both of those are done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and now we'll try to go a little quicker. Um, the next item on the agenda is a trail designation for Granite Mountain Preserve Trail in Putnam County. We're designating four miles of trail, and Michelle, it's, it's your account. Would you like to speak to it briefly? Very briefly. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, we um, preserved this land, 360 acres in Putnam Valley, at the beginning of this year. We then had um, cadets from West Point map out the trails. And we're very excited now to be considered um, for this designation as a Greenway Trail uh, and also for uh, grant money to come later. Um, it really brings uh, a lot of good public attention to the recreational resources of Putnam Valley and Putnam County. And I thank the, the Conservancy for this consideration. Thank you. When we do vote on this, this will be both secret determination and designation of the Granite Mountain Preserve Trails in the County of Putnam. Moving on, um, last time we designated the, did amended seeker and designation of the village of Altamont Museum in the streets trail in Albany County, and the resolution incorrectly said Riverside instead of Countryside, so we're going to correct that at this meeting so that the trail is, is listed in its proper category. Uh, the next item is acceptance of the audit, and Jane, if you would like to come up and talk about that is the treasurer. Well, if, if you're comfortable, sure, yeah, sure. just as long as you talk into the mic, because we can all hear you, but the recording doesn't pick it up if we don't talk into the mic. And when we put it up on the website, the people who listen to it um, get frustrated. Okay. Uh, we received a clean opinion on the audit. No items on the management letter or the finance committee letter. So now we need a motion and a vote to well, we'll, we'll accept do, them? We're going to we'll catch everything at once. It, okay. Does anyone have any questions on the audits? And again, I'll turn to Jane on the budget for adoption that we tabled at the last meeting. Okay, the budget for the Greenway and the um, Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area. Um, I actually reviewed it line by line with Scott, and he knows every single line of it. Um, so if you have questions, Scott can answer them. Right. Hearing none, I'm going to move to the Conservancy grants. We had a lot of applications. We had $462,000 worth of applications. We have a $250,000 appropriation through the Environmental Protection Fund. But we also have some leftover National Heritage Area money and a private uh, trail grant. So we can actually award 285000 this year, which is high for us over the last few years. Um, and we're going to do that as, with your concurrence. The first grant is for the Friends of Five River for a nature's accessible backyard trail-based environmental education garden project. They requested 5500 and the Grants Committee recommended 5500 uh, I don't believe there's anybody here from Five Rivers, is that correct? Hearing no one. Columbia Economic Development Corporation for the Boston and Albany Rail Trail Study. They requested 12750 and the Grants Committee is recommending 12750 Their CEO, Michael Tucker, I believe, is here. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on behalf of Columbia Economic Development and Columbia County, we are very grateful to the uh, Greenway for their efforts in promoting trails, and we look forward to working with Andy and Paul in continuing to connect trails throughout not only the county, but to our neighboring counties uh, as well. Thank you very much for this grant. Thank you. Uh, the next grant is for the Friends of Lindenwald for Martin Van Buren National Historic Site Park Trail Improvements. They requested $5,000. The Grants Committee is recommending $5,000. Beth and I went out a couple of months ago and measured those trails, and they definitely need the improvements. They have some very wet areas that they want to uh, figure out how to dry up. Uh, I believe Richard Anderson is here. Yes. 
Um, <clears throat> I want to thank the committee for, for choosing us. Um, this is an extremely important thing for us. We have just, we're only three years into owning the property and we have already had Greenway designation and today we've received our, our first grant. And uh, I would say thank you to all of you for the considerations. And we would like to, because this is our first grant, we would like to speak with persons who, uh, who did the grants to see what we did well, what we could do better on. So is that possible? Yes, you, you can reach out to any of us. Okay. Um, Thank you You very can see much. me after. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, the, the next grant is for the Thomas Cole Historic House, connecting the Thomas Cole site to Skywalk. Um, Skywalk, for those of you who don't know, is an ambitious proposal to connect Olana and Thomas Cole House via a trail across the, uh, the Rip Van Winkle Bridge, and Betsy Jack can speak to it much more eloquently than I can. Oh, well, thanks. I'll give it a try. Um, thank you all. Well, as all of you know, probably, because you are, as again, preaching to the choir, you know that Thomas Cole National Historic Site is only two miles from Olana, the home of Frederick Church. And so we are linked thematically and physically. And um, most of that two miles is along the Rip Van Winkle Bridge, which I think is some of the most scenic and most beautiful stretch anywhere. So we decided to uh, come together. I said to the head of Green County Tourism, I think the only thing we're missing is a name. Let's call it Skywalk. Um, so we are developing this as a linkage for our two sides of the river. Um, so the, the grant that we were awarded today is extremely useful because Skywalk will build a sidewalk right to the property edge of the Thomas Cole site and stop there. And then people will be let off into nothing. <laughs> so we, we need to design an entrance and trail that goes from that property edge to our visitor center to complete the entire way. So thank you. This is critical for us to um, make that Thomas Cole site integrated with the entire Skywalk stretch. And my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that the bridge authority is working to put bump outs on the bridge itself so yes. that people can stop and paint or take pictures or whatever they want to do so they can recreate scenes that maybe even Cole didn't, wasn't able to. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it was perfect timing because when we had this meeting to talk about can we create Skywalk, we already had a pedestrian walkway along that bridge. Um, and then we learned that the Bridge Authority was just about to spend $8 million to upgrade it. We said, wow, there's our match. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, they then added plans to create what they're calling bump outs or viewing platforms along that walkway. So in three different spots, they're creating 50 foot long bump outs. So three of them, and they're describing them as little mini parks along the way with benches and what have you. Um, and thematic signage, et cetera. So it'll be a beautiful facility. They're renovating the walkway, and they're, um, they're right on schedule to complete these bump outs this calendar year. So they just went right ahead. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. The next grant is for the city of Beacon for the Beacon Hudson River Trail, and this is a trail they are looking to complete um, alongside Metro North tracks connecting the Metro North train station in Beacon to the Newburgh Beacon Bridge, and they requested 39500 and the Grants Committee recommended 39500 I don't believe there's anyone here from Beacon. Uh, Friends of Mills Mansion, is their project is called History Hidden in the Woods. They get the prize for the longest title this year. Exploring surviving 19th century structures and landscape at Staxburg State Historic Site and its environs along the Hudson. Um, they requested $4,050. The Grants Committee is recommending that is to develop an interpretive program um, along already designated Greenway Trails. And I don't believe there's anyone here from the Friends group. The Village of Wappingers Falls is looking to construct a lower Wappinger Creek community boathouse. They have most of the money. They need a little bit to do some masonry work and roofing work. They've requested $20,000. Uh, we're uh, the Grants Committee is recommending 20000 and this will finish a community boathouse that will also in the wintertime be used for civic events. Uh, Hudson Highlands Land Trust, Granite Mountain Preserve Public Access Improvements. Michelle, 
you requested 15,000, the Grants Committee is recommending 15,000. Do you have anything to add from talking about the trail? Uh, I'll just add to what I said before about the, um, the importance of the, the uh, Greenway designation. Uh, this money from this grant uh, really provides public access to the Granite Mountain Preserve that did not previously exist. So it's going to help us um, build a kiosk from the maps that were generated by the West Point cadets. Um, and we'll be able to put that map up on the kiosk, uh, informational kiosk, as well as build a parking area off Peekskill Hollow Road to give people access to the Granite Mountain Preserve. And we're very grateful for consideration of this grant money. The next one is Rockland County. They are looking to create an Empire State Trail Enhancement Project. They want to build some several miles of shoreline trail that will connect to the new Tappan Zee Bridge and cross over into Westchester, where it will eventually link to the uh, Empire State Trail. Um, as Andy can attest, Rockland County has been very proactive in reaching out to us uh, concerning the Empire State Trail, and they are extremely enthusiastic about it. I don't think Vincent made it today. Uh, is there anyone else here from Rockland? All right. Um, they requested 40,000, and the grants committee is recommending 40,000. The town of East Greenbush is looking to do an East Greenbush Town Park Connection Trail. They requested 39,920, and we are the grants committee is, is recommending 12,000. This will be an ADA accessible trail that will connect um, a, a, a a center for disabled folks to the town park, which has a multiplicity of uses, many of which are designed for disabled folks to use. Um, we like this project a lot, even though it doesn't really fall into our criteria, as well as some of the other ones. Hence, it gets a, a lower amount recommended. Um, town of Stillwater, Champlain Canalway Trail Action Plan update. Um, the Champlain Canalway Trail Action Plan is the northern part of the Greenway vision. Greenway Trail Vision Plan that this board adopted in 2011. They are looking to update it based on the improvements that they have been have made since they began the process and since Andy announced several projects that the Empire State Trail are going to fund. Um, they requested 17000 That's what we're recommending. And I know Tracy Clothier is here and get used to her because she's here a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Um, the project is represents a critical portion of the, um, of the whole Empire State um, project and um, what's very neat about this whole thing is it's a regional project that involves 18 communities municipalities they act like little charms along a water necklace if you can think of the Hudson Hudson River from Waterford up to Whitehall and at Fort Edward it continues up as the Champlain Canal so trying to bring all those people together and all those communities together as one voice is very very challenging so the Champlain Canalway Trail Working Group, run right now by, um, so sorry, Jeannie, Jeannie Williams. Jeannie Williams, <laughs> mind break. Uh, Jeannie Williams here um, is managing it. And what's unique about this is that they take it from a wouldn't it be nice stage to actually well, let's get this done. They get through all of the obstacles and problems, challenges, and make it happen. Very extraordinary. So thank you very much on, on behalf of the town of Stillwater. All right, our next grant is to the Kingston Land Trust for the Hasbrook Delaware Parklet Landscape Implementation. They're designing a park around what will be and, and currently is part of the Empire State Trail. They requested $40,000, but because this is an amenity and not actual trail construction, they're only eligible for $20,000, which is what the Grants Committee recommended. And Julie Farr from the Kingston Land Trust is here. Julie? Uh, Julia. Julia, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. We are very appreciative of this funding. Um, this parklet gives access to a section of the Kingston Green Line, which is a system of uh, rail trails and complete streets that is an initiative of the Kingston Land Trust in collaboration with the city of Kingston and the county. And this parklet uh, gives access to a section of the trail that the Greenway Conservancy um, actually helped uh, develop the feasibility study for with funding. And so uh, we are really pleased to have this parklet open as a public space and um, not only give access to the trail, but be a community spot for, that involves the public. And we have started doing that in the design process. We had a pro bono firm do the design and 
the Kingston Land Trust really wanted to support the city in this particular project by bringing in the Hispanic community and having bilingual uh, process, public process. And so receiving this funding is now going to, to be able to put those, uh, to, to bring that design to fruition that, that had so much community input and will continue to do that through programming um, with collaborations with other nonprofits on the site for um, education and, uh, and art and planting. So thank you very much. And I also have uh, samples of the project if anyone's interested in seeing our progress since we applied for the grant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the Orange County Water Authority is applying for a grant for the Wapkill River Water Trail in Orange and Ulster counties. This is one of those, a resource used is a resource loved, and a resource loved is a resource protected grants. Um, the, the folks on the Walk Hill are concerned that the pollution levels are higher than they need to be, and they are trying to get um, public attention drawn to it, and one of the ways they're going to do it is by creating a water trail, which I think is a fabulous idea. Uh, David Church is here to represent the, the group that, is, uh, that applied for this, and David, if you would... Well, thank you, Scott, and thanks to the Conservancy and all for supporting this. Uh, um, as Scott knows, if I may reflect 20-something years ago, Scott, in windowless basement rooms uh, with Wint Aldridge and others, we talked about protecting the tributaries of the Hudson, and uh, some of this is finally getting realized. So, yes, the Walk Hill has problems, but uh, collaboratively with Ulster County, Orange County, uh, the Walk Hill River uh, Watershed Alliance uh, and the towns along the river, we're proposing... Uh, to promote enhanced access for a paddling trail that will start at the state line in New Jersey at the, at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Refuge and go under one of those bridges that Andy showed in a slide in New Paltz and end at the, uh, at the uh, state boat launch uh, in the town of New Paltz. So we appreciate the support. And I've paddled a lot of that. It's an absolutely gorgeous stretch of river. Um, that grant requested amount was 8850 and that's the amount the Grants Committee is recommending. Uh, the town of Lloyd is seeking 39950 for the John Burroughs Black Creek Phase 1 Implementation Bicycle Segment, including a traffic impact analysis. Uh, this is a project that Beth and I have been working along with Scenic Hudson and a variety, the town of Esopus, uh, Jennifer Schwartz Berkey, the town of Lloyd, and a variety of other folks. I don't believe there's anyone here from... Actually, I wanted to um, read something from Joan. Oh, excellent. She Thank you. She texted me, my dear friend Joan Burroughs, who is the... Uh, great granddaughter of John Burroughs, the naturalist and writer. Um, she's been working very hard for many years to get uh, CFA and Greenway grants uh, to move this forward. And it is one of the trails that is a connector, as Andy said, to the Empire State Trail and is a beautiful natural trail that will lead all the way up to the John Burroughs slab side cabin and through scenic cuts and sites. And she said, um, that she was very sorry she couldn't be here. Please thank Scott and all the good folks of our Greenway for all their support of this regional project. We are all grateful to have such a wonderful partner and proud to put the spotlight on the many beauties and resources of the Black Creek and to weave it into the nature ethic of John Burroughs, into the amazing trail network so that we are, so, so many are contributing to. Sorry. It's all upside for the region. It will also add to the story of New York's role in the nation's conservation history. It's all very exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. I also just wanted to say thank you to um, Supervisor Rohr, uh, who said, uh, unfortunately not here, and had a really nice catchphrase this morning. She said, it all starts with the Greenway Grant. I think we should use it. I, I, I like how she analogized the towns and, and our not-for-profit partners to the boots on the ground, because they really are. We don't have enough staff to be the boots on the ground. We, we just give them a little bit of money and let them go, and they're doing tremendous work. Um, our next to last trail grant is for the Feeder Canal Alliance for an education and interpretation project that will include an update to a brochure and to uh, create a mobile responsive website. And hang on just a minute. Jeannie Williams is the executive director of the Feeder Canal Alliance. She's also the chair of the Champlain Canalway Trail Group, working group. Um, but more importantly for us, she's one of the people, many of you on the board, all of you know, that Saratoga and Washington counties weren't originally in the Greenway. They had, the communities had to ask to come in. 
Jeannie was one of the people who helped wrangle those communities to where they asked their legislators to be admitted into the Greenway, and she has spent the last several years since they came in wrangling those communities to join the Greenway. So Jeannie is a friend to the Greenway in more ways than one. Jeannie, you requested 5,500, and that's what we're going to give you. Um, you said it all. Um, we thank you so much for your support, but more so, we thank you for being who all you are. Um, we're standing on your shoulders. We are your wilderness. Um, with the Empire State Trail, um, we felt like a revolving door. Um, all of a sudden, we were at the end of the line, and now with the Empire State Trail coming through, um, it's blown through us, and it's, we're not the end of the line anymore. It's great. And um, this website will be wonderful. And um, I also wanted to let you know that I knew um, Sam and Phyllis Aldrich through the Racing Museum. In another life, I was one of the curators there. And um, as soon as we got this grant, I emailed Tracy and I said, Tracy, we have four grants in the Champlain Canalway Trail region. We won the Quadfecta, and he would have loved that. <laughs> Thank you again. Our final grant is to the town of Fort Anne for the Battle Hill Trails Master Plan. It's the development of a master plan for an historic site where a Revolutionary War battle occurred, uh, known as Battle Hill. Uh, so that works out well. Um, the project will involve assessing the site for recreational walking trail with interpretive elements. The town requested 20000 That's what the award is. And Tracy Clothier again. Thank you. Um, Battle Hill is such a neat place, and it was ignored for so many years. It's 67 acres that was purchased by a, um, some kind of a mining uh, company, and they were going to mine it. And um, the town bought it with a, with a uh, grant uh, through the National Park Service. And now it will stand to be a, a real masterpiece for trails. And I'll just, it's right off of the um, uh, Empire State Trail. So... If you can imagine going north on Route 4 out of Fort Anne, and you see a, um, a big open field to the left, and there's uh, Lakes de Locks interpretive signage, and you think, well, that's where it was. No. If you look up, there's a knob and a very forested area. That's where it took place, and that's where the Americans held the British uh, for quite a while and had quite an impact on the, um, the war uh, down at the battlefield to the south. So anyway, this is really special, and the town of Fort Anne is so grateful and uh, expects this to be a, a real neat tourist destination along that whole corridor. So thank you. All right, so Kevin, we need a motion to designate the Granite Mountain Preserve Trail in Putnam County, amend the designation for the Altamont Trail in Alt Museum in the Streets Trail in Albany County, accept the audit, adopt the budget, and award the grants. So this is an omnibus mo motion. And who is going to be the brave soul to step forward and support it? First of all, and are there any recusals, I should ask for you? So we have them, Jennifer noted. No, no. Okay, duly noted. Okay, so I think, Stefan, I saw a hand go up from you, the intrepid soul you are. And uh, second was Betsy? No, Betsy has Oh, is there a cues? I'm sorry. Okay, Thomas Cole. Yes, of course. Jane's going to second. Okay, all right. Enthusiasm is always appreciated. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any, any opposed? Okay, great. And I just want to say, you know, as you can see, there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into this on every end. The people who are applying, we congratulate you and commend you. But I also want to thank the staff who do so much to shepherd these and use great judgment in trying to move them through the process. But also I want to thank the Grants Committee, um, because we do, me, and every single member of the Grants Committee goes through these applications very, very scrupulously and carefully, and uh, they're given great consideration, and I think it's reflected in the quality of the grants that we're getting in the application. So thank all of you, and thank you, Scott and Beth, and the entire team. So that concludes the Greenway Conservancy portion of the meeting, and now we switch over to the Community's Council, and that goes back to Barney. Of course, Kevin's entirely correct. Is that <clears throat> is the grants committee does a lot of work. They they meet the, about ten days before was it I guess and, and review all of these grants. Now the 
The real work, of course, is done by, by Scott and Beth and Dan. And Scott, Beth is over here with me. Dan's back there with Shannon, who also helps on the grants okay, now, too. Shannon, too. Um, there's a ton of money. And, it, and for years, we fought to get about a quarter of it, right? And now it's, um, and, and that's because the legislature in the state of New York has come to realize how important these grants are. And so we, so we couldn't do this without, without the legislature. And Sally, as you, you well know, it's taken a long time to educate, if that's the word, if that's the word, word the, it is, and you played a large, a big role in that. Thank you very much. So they talk, all right, now on to the, to the council, and um, I'll call the meeting to order and, and say, Scott, you can talk about this indemnification business. I want to add one thing to what you said first. Our previous trail grant program was funded through the efforts of Senator Saland. Um, so thank you, because this program wouldn't have existed since 1993 without you. Um, well, Steve, <laughs> great stuff. Um, yes. So Senator Serino and Assemblyman um, Cahill updated you previously on the indemnity law extension to December 31st, 2022. Um, so we will move on to the Greenway grants. Um, the town of Schwanguck in Ulster County has requested a grant for a waterfront comprehensive plan update. They've requested 10,000, and that is what the grants committee is recommending. Supervisor John Volk is here, I believe. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Um, the uh, Hamlet of Walk Hill sits along the beautiful Walk Hill River. It's on the New York State designated byway. And also we have a three mile uh, trail between Walden and the Hamlet of Walk Hill, uh, which was federally funded and uh, gets a lot of use. Uh, unfortunately, we've had these two school bus uh, companies that have established business there probably 50 to 60 years ago and have grown and grown and grown and this year, they both lost, well, it was one company for a student. They lost their contracts with the two respective school districts and shut down. So now is a great opportunity to do some comprehensive planning, do the rezoning that needs to be done along the river to enhance the business community and uh, just make the town more vibrant. And uh, before I close, I'd like to, I don't know where Andy went now, uh, I reach out to him. We have a... Uh, that section of rail trail that is developed. We have one little stumbling block to connect to the Walk Hill Valley Rail Trail and Gardener, and it's called the Department of Corrections. And if anybody can help me get a serious meeting with Department of Corrections, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, the next grant is for the Village of Menans in Albany County. They've requested uh, $9,900 to do a comprehensive plan. So, so that they can proceed with a local waterfront revitalization strategy. We reached out to Jamie at Department of State. He checked with his folks. They're supportive of this grant. The Grants Committee is also recommending 9900 I don't believe we have anyone here from Menans. Um, so those, and the last one is the Village of Victory in Saratoga County. They are seeking $5,000 for the General Schuyler Sawmill Park. They want to revitalize the park and eventually uh, create a trail that will connect to the Empire State Trail and for the, I believe the last time, Tracy Clothier. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Village of Victory is a perfect example of a community that would never do anything without a Hudson River Valley grant. They simply just do not have the financial capacity. So it's amazing that you're able to do this. It just pushes, gives some leverage to this community to really participate in this amazing trail. So. Just think about um, if you know where the Schuyler House is in Schuylerville Victory. Right across the street is the new Sage Trail. It's about a mile long, and it sits below Victory Woods, where the Americans held back, uh, the Americans were along the trail and held back the British again. Very important section. And this little park is going to be the trailhead for the other side. 
so it, it's really critical um, that that gets done, and it really will provide a really neat passive space for the village as well. So thank you on behalf of the Village of Victory. Right. Uh, moving on to our compact grants, the town of Northeast and Dutchess County is seeking 25000 to update their comprehensive plan along with the Village of Millerton. Uh, the Grants Committee is recommending full funding for that, and Edith Greenwood is here from the town. I cannot thank you enough. This is just a godsend. Um, I um, was asked to chair the Comprehensive Plan Update Committee. Uh, I um, am retired and now living in the town of Northeast, um, and quickly realized <laughs> that we needed help, that a, collected, a collection of uh, concerned and involved elected and other people uh, did not have the wherewithal to get through this process without professional guidance. This grant is going entirely to uh, retain a professional uh, planner. Uh, we've gone through the process and we have identified that planner. I'm very excited to start working. I think the other wonderful aspect of this process is going to be increased collaboration between two municipalities. And I'm very optimistic that that's going to be one of the most important results. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, the last compact grant and the last council grant is to the town of Red Hook. They requested $10,000 for a zoning law update for natural resource protection. Uh, the Grants Committee is recommending 10000 and Supervisor Robert McKeon is here, I believe. Yes. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, when I greeted my friend Sally Mazzarella this morning, she said, my God, I was looking at the list of all the Greenway grants that you've received over the years. And uh, to that end, I would like to say if the Greenway uh, would like to adopt a rewards program whereby if we receive 20 grants or so, we get the next one free, of course, we would be very supportive of that. Um, I think it sort of illustrates just how much, how often, how important it is for the local government level to uh, partner with uh, entities like the Greenway. We also have representatives from the county, the state, the land trusts. Um, we need a lot of help on the local level, and we're getting it, and we're very appreciative of that. I think also, um, um, uh, as far as this particular work, everybody... Uh, knows that the town of Red Hook has, uh, for the last two decades, been uh, very heavily invested in preserving the farmland. Um, this is a little bit more granular. We're taking a look at natural resources, um, soil mining, uh, water collection, so on and so forth. It's very critical that we have those elements, obviously, if we are going to uh, responsibly exploit them for the future. So thank you very much, and uh, keep up the great work. These grants, well, they've all been they've all been reviewed by the grants committee. We've heard um, um, we've heard about and this is Sally, this is incredible to get this this much money down. And and, 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 and are you raising your hand to to, to the motion? No You're moving it, yes. Sally, and the, and and and, and the, now all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. All right, and thank you all very much. And Scott, you do a great job with this. You know, Scott's got a really big staff, staff of three. That includes himself. And he gets all of this together. And he also, um, he can say that, that, um, what is she telling you about? Beth? Beth, what do you need? Okay, all right. We're Maybe just I'm making sure the, the uh, Motions and seconds are in order. Motions and, and they are. are right. And it, um, now, now we have the oh, you compact community updates. Yeah, compact community updates. I'm sure. sure you all know what these compact communities are, but Scott told me that. All right. the compact communities are those where the county has adopted a compact plan and the communities have changed their zoning and signed on to it. Um, last year, Dutchess County amended and improved their uh, their compact and we announced at the last meeting that um, what we're doing is is each community announced um, adopts the new
compact, we're letting you know. And for this meeting, it's the City of Beacon, towns of Amenia, Beekman, Clinton, Dover, Hyde Park, Pine Plains, Poughkeepsie, Red Hook, the villages of Fishkill, Pauling, Red Hook, Tivoli, and Wappingers Falls have all adopted those plans. So that's more than half the county in one fell swoop. That doesn't need a vote. That's just an FYI. So. celebrate what this great county is doing and we we look forward to we don't meet till the next year do we? we meet in march again we'll get okay. to that right. <laughs> okay now um scott what, else, what do we need to do to we're, we're ready to close the council meeting and open the national heritage area meeting all right um, motion to adjourn we are hearing to that okay the the, the, the greenway council and Conservancy are, are closing. We move on to the National Heritage Area. Um, it's it's <laughs> seamless because most of you are members of the National Heritage Area as well. well I, yes. Um, last time we met, I, I let you know that we were updating our economic impact study and would have results at this meeting, and I do have results. Um, on an annual basis, the Hudson River Valley National Heritage Area and Greenway programs are generating $975.8 million, creating and retaining 9,888 jobs, um, generating tax revenue of $112.4 million, which is a return on investment to the taxpayer for every dollar they give us of nearly $103. Um, you each have a two-page uh, pager. Each of the board members do, and there are copies for anyone in the public who would like one out at the where you checked in. There's also the board members also received the full uh, impact study. Um, one of the things that resulted in significant growth from, I believe it was 575 million in the 2011 study, was that Dan Jeanson came up with a better way to count our visitors in a more accurate way. So. What we've been informed of by the consultant who did this is that our 2011 study in all likelihood um, significantly undercounted our economic impact then. So it, we probably didn't go from 575 to 975, probably higher last time. So. Just to add to that, just to pause that because I get a little rushing to close, but it's worth this noting. It's close to a billion dollars a year in economic impact in the National Heritage Area. That's a lot of money. And it's something that we should all, this is a great, uh, elevator speech to walk around with when, when people are asking about importance of cultural and heritage tourism and what we do. These are great numbers to know. Close to a billion dollars a year in economic impact, almost 10,000 jobs. This is impressive stuff, Scott. Um, we did get our uh, full budget in tw uh, for this federal fiscal year, and we will be announcing $55,000 in heritage development grants uh, December 1st with applications due back February 9th, and you'll be asked to make a decision at the March 21st meeting on those grants. Um, the Ramble has recently completed. We went into October for the first time ever. Beth insisted that I bring this in to show you what I made on my Ramble. Um, we had a paddle making class for the first time, um, as well as a variety of other things. And Beth, would you like to come up and discuss how the Ramble went, as the person who does all of the Almost really fast. Um, I had intended to talk about how we have this fabulous new photographer this year, Susie Yaman. We had a, um, a slideshow, but it a file got corrupted or something. We're not sure why it's not showing, but she documented more than 30 events. And one of the cool things about her is that she uses a drone for part of her work. And so we have some, in addition to the traditional photography that she did, we have some really beautiful overhead shots that are going to help us market the ramble and get a new perspective um, for our materials next year. So we're excited about that. We had 243 events this year. Um, participation numbers are still coming in from our event leaders, but the weather was overall um, pretty great this year, so we're expecting some, some good participation numbers. Um, we had some really interesting events at the paddle carving class at the um, Hudson River Maritime Museum. There were carriage rides at Olana. There was outdoor yoga in Harriman. Um, there was nature journaling in the Albany Pine Bush Preserve. So 
That's thanks to all of our event leaders and partner organizations for making it such a successful year and such a diversity of events. They're the ones that really put on the ramble. We're just organizing everything. Um, yeah, boots on the ground, exactly. And just thanks to the Hudson River Estuary Program at the DEC, uh, New York State Parks, and Empire State Development for being our uh, agency partners in the ramble. And the, the ramble, the last time we checked, generates about 21 million in economic impact a year. So it's a significant event. Beth, you just do terrific stuff. You really do. And this is how many years has that been going now? <laughs> it's a wonderful it's a wonderful okay. All right. One of the projects that Dan Jensen is leading for us is a Hudson River line mobile app. It's to create a, an app that's on your phone that when you're riding the Hudson River line trains will tell you what you're looking at outside your window. Um, that will be one thing that pops up. But there will also be audio tours of other selected um, topics. We have 10 already in the can or pretty close, and we're looking to develop some more. Um, we selected OnSell. They had the best price, under 20000 for a five-year cost. Um, we had bids that ranged all the way up to 791000 to to produce this. Um, what we'll get for this is a standalone app that people can walk into a train station, see this on a poster, take a picture of the QR code, go right to their, their store, download it, and it's a free app. Um, but it will also be listed in the National Park Service on Ansel app as one of, as an addition to the 70 different historic sites that are on there, including right here. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna catch people who commute, we're gonna catch people who went to New York City to look at a heritage site and decide to come up river to check out Hyde Park or Martin Van Buren or anywhere else. And um, we're really excited about it. And Dan has been full out on this. Um, he's, his booth is covered with maps of the Hudson River with different ideas for each of the themes that we're going to have, which will include um, industry and commerce, environment. And give me some others, Dan. Into the microphone, you know this. <laughs> There's a Revolutionary War. We're going to have a Freedom and Dignity, which will have the Roosevelt's uh, Native American stories, um, Underground Railroad, things like that. And then uh, said Commerce, which will include bridges, um, canals, things like that. Lighthouses. Lighthouses, yes, can't forget them. Uh, so that's all I've got for that, no votes. Um, do you want me to just move on to the executive director's report? Yes, all right, good. you all got it. You can read. He is executive director uh, of this. <laughs> well. um, but I just would ask you to take a moment to thank our staff. Uh, Dan, Shannon, where did you go? Uh, Beth, uh, and Paul and Andy, who have fitted in seamlessly into the office and are doing their own thing off in their corner, but are there for us when, whenever we need them. So thank you all. Um, new business public comment. Um, if anyone in, has anything they would like to bring up that we haven't covered already. Hi, I know we're rushing with a very quick agenda here, but I wanted to let you know that we're with Greater Hudson Heritage Network, and through the partnership with Greenway, we presented two workshop series this last year. Four were on visitor services and four were on historic housekeeping. Just to let you know, I got the numbers. We had 67 organizations participate in the visitor services workshops that handled this last year, and 63 organizations for the historic housekeeping workshop, which I know Dan attended, and now you know all about taking care of your collections. Out <laughs> <laughs> of clean silver, etc. We have our last workshop, which is taking place at Statsburg on November 1st. So I wanted to thank all of you for your support of Greater Hudson and for the heritage community, because if it wasn't for you, we would not have the opportunity to care for these prices, collections, and all these wonderful institutions. So again, thank you so much for your support. This is another one of those boots on the ground thing. 
we don't have the resources to do these trainings. We don't have the expertise to do these trainings, but you do. You get the people who can do them, and for a relatively small amount of money, we're having an impact on a lot of our historic sites. So thank you, Priscilla. Yes, Colonel. From your academic arm at the Hudson River Valley Institute, I hope you enjoy your new issue of the Hudson River Valley Review. It's in the mail now. Uh, one of the features in here is an article by Chairman McHenry, a Hudson River Valley Greenway, part one. So you can read this one and then anticipate part two in the spring issue, his view on the formation of this organization. Tonight at Nellie Galetti in the Murray Student Center, 7 p.m., Dr. James Kirby Martin, visiting professor at West Point, is going to speak on the Hudson River Valley, West Point in the American Revolution. Love to have you there. One of the preeminent scholars of the American Revolution. Uh, thank you very much. All right. One final thing before we leave. Um, we are changing our meeting schedule. As, as you know, we used to go January, March, October, or October in June, June and October. Um, the last, two of the last three years we've conflicted with the governor's state of the state. We've had to cancel the meeting or postpone the meeting, and this is unfair to all of you who make the effort to set up your schedules and, and attend. So from now on, uh, we're going to do March, June, September, November. So the next meeting is March 21st, then June 13th, November 12th, or September 12th, and November 14th. So we'll get an in-progress ramble update next year. Yes. You may have heard earlier in the springtime that uh, Governor Cuomo had announced the round two of the downtown revitalization initiative. It's a $100 million statewide initiative that uh, identifies 10 cities within each of the regional economic development council regions to receive a $10 million uh, award for, for doing downtown revitalization. Well, uh, since our last meeting, in, um, it was announced that there are two cities within the Hudson River Valley both Kingston as well as the city of Hudson that will be receiving $10 million each to implement projects. So they will receive $300,000 to do planning and then 9.7. That is good news, Jamie. Thank you. Next meeting. Any other questions or comments? And it, um, thank you all very much. This is this is an exciting organization because we have persisted, we still exist, and we've got a great staff, and we're doing great things, and we've got great members. Um, spread the word. I believe you just called everybody stubborn. <laughs> and, uh, any other? Is, now? Yes. Are you making it? <laughs> Yeah. Is it unanimous consent that we adjourn? Thank you all. The management committee meeting for the National Heritage Area will take place here. It's starting at, uh, let's make, well, it's supposed to be 1230, but we'll do, we'll do our best to make it 1230. Thank you, everyone. Have, have a great day. Okay. I'm sorry I moved you, but we had to get the assembly. I know. No, we're with you. I'm sorry we moved you, but we needed the assembly.